Hey guys, so in this video, I want to show you how I made this rose gold themed fairy light photo strip. I also want to specifically show you guys how I edited and cropped my photos and printed them in a way that they were printed to make it look like they were vintage or whatever. So I have dust on my photos, I have a little number date thingies, and I also have a couple of light leaks and such. That one is probably the most prominent over there. I also show you guys how I crop them to be a printable size in case you are doing this for like dorm life, you have a bunch of photos and you don't want them to take up a bunch of room. Um, if you make this photo smaller, you can fit more on your wall. So if you want to know how I did this, just keep watching. Alright, so to show you guys how I edited the photos in order to get them all like vintagey and able to print, I'm going to show you guys how to edit these two photos. I have one light colored portrait and one darker horizontal photo. Um, these are the three apps that we're going to be using to edit today, Visco, 1998Cam, and PicJointer. Um, so we're going to start off with Visco, but you can also start with 1998Cam. Um, the first step is just to edit the photos to make them look vintagey, and both of these apps have like vintagey filters. So we're going to go ahead and upload the two photos. Then to start editing the photo, we're just going to click on the photo, then click onto the little like glidey bars that are on the bottom left. So I like to set all of the photos to the same preset, so I like, I mean I thought that they would be more cohesive that way. The preset that I chose was HB2, um, which already turns it a little bit of like warm toned and contrasty. Um, so that's what I did, and then I also just went in and changed some things just to make it look however vintagey as I wanted. Um, like for this one I'm bringing down exposure and bringing up temperature and up tint. I usually did that to photos that I don't know just like didn't look right um but anyways this was my like attempt at cohesiveness after you're done with that I just went into adjust and cropped the photo I found that the ideal crop is four by five or five by four um then this is just how I've, how the picture is going to be cropped later so I just thought I would crop it now to get the crop that I wanted so I just saved the photo and then moving on to the darker photo, again I'm going to go to the preset HB2, um, but it's a little bit different now, this is more, I don't know, it's just, it's just a different look, so this is where I'm going to turn up temperature and tint just to make the photo more of something that I wanted. And then since it's a horizontal photo, we're going to go 5x4 just so we get the right crop save it and here is a look at all of my photos as you can see the hb2 setting was put on all of them but they're all still not super cohesive and anything like that so yeah just fair warning then we're gonna go and export these into our camera roll and we're going to take it into 1998 cam so this app is I mean, it has a lot of vintage photos. Uh, oh, to upload the photos, just the bottom left hand thingy. Um, once we choose the photo to upload, this app kind of just gives us like dusts and light leaks, which is super cool, but it also gives us the date. So if you can see right here on the photo on the bottom right hand side, there's the date. Um, and this will usually be the date that you took the photo if you took it on anything digital or anything like that, or like the day that you scanned it if, you, if it was scanned. You can adjust the date or you can turn it into the date that it was in 1998. It's whatever you want. This is just a way to make it look a little bit more vintagey, I guess. Then we're going to go into dust. And as you scroll more towards the right, you can see larger pieces of dust. Um, later on, I'll explain why larger is better because it's literally just the most visible, um, which is super important if we are printing out the photos. So. The dust option is pretty cool. You can change opacity, saturation. If you change saturation, it just turns it red, um, which is kind of cool. And then hue kind of just changes it to all rainbow colors. You can also adjust um, orientation so that they all don't have the same exact layout of dust if you make it super obvious. Next, we're going to go into light leaks. For these more, like, more exposed photos, light leaks aren't common. Um, if you want it to be a realistic looking light leak, usually pictures with taken with flash or just dark pictures in general with like only a couple of light sources um, 
have light leaks in this one. I just did a very, very small one, you can see, um, and we just saved that because I don't want to go too overboard to make it look too unrealistic, so yeah. For this one, we can have a little bit more fun with the light leaks, but first for the dust, I did edit the dust. Um, and like that, that one that I just had right there, that was a very prominent dust that I should have chosen, but instead I chose this one. I chose the one that will probably not end up being super visible. Now I'm just having fun with a bunch of different like leaks. You can honestly do whatever you want. I'm here showing you guys a bunch of different options. Um, yeah. Once I found one that I liked, I am adjusting the hue just to make the color a little bit more representative of the colors that are in the photo, again just to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, so I just saved that and as you can see that was a lot more of a prominent uh, light leak. Next we are going to pick jointer for kind of the final step. Um, pick jointer, oh I want to pause and just tell you that pick jointer is you do need to pay for it but there's a free one week trial. Um, Pixart also has um, this little collage thing but pick jointer, pick jointer was just so much easier to use. Um, very simple, there was no like watermark or anything like that. So after the week trial, just remember to cancel it. I would recommend canceling it right away because you can still use the app for the entire week that you paid for the trial. But yeah, anyways, just my little spiel. So we're going to be using those top two middle ones. If we can either do portrait or landscape, it really doesn't matter. Um, we're going to, For this photo, let's just do this one, I don't know. Um, so we're going to click one of the two and then select both photos. We're just going to do two at a time. After we choose the photos, we're just going to go to those little arrows and we're going to change the aspect ratio, which is the ratio in which, um, I don't know, you're going to see it once I change it. <laughs> the ratio, the perfect ratio that I found was one and a half to one or two to three. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to, uh, Oh, if you do landscape, it's going to be the other way around. This one is 1 to 1.5, the other one was 1.5 to 1. Just me explaining. Then if you go to the next one, you're going to get rid of the outer margin, then you're going to get rid of the inner margin because our photos do not need that. It just makes the photo smaller. If you want a smaller photo, go ahead and do that. Um, next, we're going to click on the photo that's like oriented the wrong way and we're just going to press the little um, twirly arrow thingy, whatever, and as you can see, I just flipped the photo. Um, so now it has like a perfect crop. Um, this, again, the photos aren't cropped four by five, but it's the closest like direct measurement that I could get. Anyways, we're going to save that to camera roll um, and now we are ready to print. All right, so here are the pictures. I'm gonna see them for the first time. Um, really excited. So they come in like an envelope within an envelope. And let's see. Oh my gosh. I love them so much. Crazy. Okay, let me try to find the example photo because I don't think that you guys just want to be staring at my face. Found it. Okay. Here we go. So these are the two pictures. They came out exactly how I wanted them. I mean, quality obviously um, depends on the quality of your photo. Um, and here are the little, little what am I saying? Here are the little timestamps. They're a little bit fuzzy. Um, they're not a little bit fuzzy. They're like, they have the little like glow around them. That's what I'm trying to say. But they look awesome. Um, I'm really excited and they are all the expected size. So now with these, what we're going to do is cut them. Most people would use scissors, but I am extra as frick. So I have one of these huge paper cutters. Obviously you can cut them down the middle with a pair of scissors, very easy, um, but I'm going to be extra and I'm going to cut all of my photos like this because it's it sounds cooler and it's more fun. Slice. And we got some clean slices here. 
So while I was cutting these, I feel like I noticed that the dust in the pictures just didn't, the, the dust in the pictures only showed up well on dark photos, just like a little bit on dark photos and then like none at all on the light photos. So if you are planning on doing dust, make sure they're like big pieces of dust. For example, like the dust for this picture, see that little white mark right there? And there's also one of my friend's face. Um, that is like noticeable. Yeah, this one like looks like it has virtually no dust on it. Um, so just make a call. So yeah, these are all of my photos. I'm gonna keep it blurry. I'm sorry if that annoys you, but just, just cause these are my photos. Um, even though you kind of already saw. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna string these up now. All right, so to finally put your photos on the actual fairy lights, you are going to need your string of fairy lights. These are mine. I honestly don't know how long these are, but I recommend the longer the better. You can always have leftover lights. It's no big deal, um, but more often than not, people find themselves running out of their fairy lights. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we're going to start off with our bag of clothespins. I got this bag from the dollar store from Dollar Tree. Um, it was the only size that my dollar store had, these tiny little ones, but the tiny ones are all that you need. Um, so next I painted them, I guess this step is optional, but I painted them rose gold with this little foam brush. This is the color that I use, it's from Folk Art Multi-Surface Metallic Acrylic Paint, and it is in the color copper. Um, basically rose gold, I never had a rose gold color, but I liked this color better, and I thought it matched pretty perfectly with all of the fairy lights. So yeah, paint however many as you need. I held it like this and then I just used the foam to paint it and I'm gonna go through a second time and paint this little leftover spot right here if it'll focus. This little leftover spot right here, but for now, um, just consider them mostly painted. And the next instructions are simple enough. You're gonna take your clothespin and put it over the fairy lights. Um, like clip it over the fairy lights to where it can slide through. There's like a little hole right there and then we're just gonna go up and do like a figure eight or however many times you want to do until you feel secure about it. Um, so we're just doing a figure eight, sorry, a figure eight at the top but have it clipped to the fairy light at the bottom and then just take your photo just take your photo and clip it right there in the middle. That way it'll totally stay on your strings. And the good thing about fairy lights is that most of them are wire, so you can adjust them to however long you want or whatever position you want. But yeah, that is it for today's video. Hope you guys liked this tutorial on how to make vintage looking, aesthetically pleasing fairy light photo clips. I'll talk to you later.